Hi and welcome. I'm glad to be with you today and I want to thank you all for being here with me um, for this workshop. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about intrusive or unwanted thoughts. This is a training about intrusive or unwanted thoughts. We're going to talk a whole lot more about what those are as we move through the workshop, but I want to take a moment and just introduce myself. I'm Joanne Fortiani. I'm one of the developers of this training along with Jillian Shippard and Christy Salters Pedno. And this is a training actually that we have um, given to a lot of folks, a lot of soldiers. And, and I wanna tell you that I think you're really going to enjoy this training. I think you're gonna get some really good things out of this training today. But honestly, I don't want you to take my word for it, okay? I want you to see what some other folks had to say about this training. Um, and as you can see, I'm not gonna read these to you, but as you can see, you can take a look for yourselves and you can see what all other soldiers thought about the training that we're gonna to give today. Now, the first thing that I wanna do for today is I do want to tell you a little bit about what intrusive or unwanted thoughts are. I basically wanna give you a definition, okay? So these are thoughts, memories, or images about any stressful experience, and that could include your military experience, that can pop into your mind repeatedly. Now, a lot of times these thoughts can be really annoying. They might make it hard for you to concentrate on things, or they could make it hard for you to get things done. And what I'm gonna actually ask you to do this morning before we get started with the training is I am gonna actually ask you to take a few moments for me now and to start thinking a little bit about what maybe is the most frequent or troubling thought that you have had about a challenging event in your life. And that could even include your military service. Um, now it's likely that you've had all kinds of thoughts about your military service or other kinds of events. Those could be positive thoughts, those could be neutral thoughts, and some of those thoughts could be upsetting. And what I'd like you to do is kind of think about and focus in on a thought that's been coming into your mind most frequently within the past month. Okay. Now, this could be a thought about something personal that you experienced. This could be a thought about something that involved others um, that you know, or it could even be something that you heard about. Um, you know, it can be about anything. There's really no right or wrong here. What's important is that it's the kind of unwanted thought that's been coming to your mind most frequently this past month. So I just want you to take a minute now and think about what that thought is for you. And uh, you can think about it this way. This is the thought that would maybe be most likely to keep you up at night. Okay, so I'm gonna give you just a few moments to think about what that thought is for you. Now, I am gonna be asking you to refer back to this thought a little bit later in the workshop, but I am not going to ask you to reveal what that thought is. I won't ask you to talk about it or tell anyone else what that thought is. Now, what I wanna do is go ahead and get started with the workshop. Has everybody got their thought? Can I just see a quick show of hands if everyone's got their thoughts? Okay, perfect. So what I wanna do first is just give you kind of a sense of what we're going to be talking about here today. Kind of give you a roadmap for this workshop. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna talk a little bit more about what are intrusive thoughts. We're then going to do a training exercise, and actually we're gonna do several of those. Um, we're gonna talk about the fact that intrusive or unwanted thoughts are normal. And then I am gonna be telling you a little bit about some common reactions to intrusive thoughts. And of course, we're gonna be talking about how to manage those unwanted thoughts most effectively or most efficiently. Now, since we are gonna be talking a lot about these intrusive or unwanted thoughts, it's important that I expand just a little bit on what we mean when we say intrusive or unwanted thoughts. 
So, you know, as I mentioned before in the definition, these are thoughts or memories or images about any kind of stressful experience, you know, that can pop into your head from time to time. Um, they might make it hard for you to concentrate or hard for you to get things done. Now, we have intrusive thoughts about all kinds of things. Um, even as I'm standing up here today, I'm having some intrusive thoughts. Uh, for example, it, it crossed my mind earlier, um, gosh, did I shut the iron off this morning, okay, when I left to come here? Um, that's an intrusive or an unwanted thought. And I'm guessing that even during this workshop, you're probably gonna have some intrusive or some unwanted thoughts. Now, sometimes it's really uh, helpful for us to be able to see an example of an intrusive thought in action. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna do a little exercise together that's actually going to give you an opportunity to see what one of these thoughts looks like when it's actually happening, okay? So if everyone is willing to participate in this exercise with me, okay, we're gonna spend a couple of minutes doing this. So what I am gonna do is in just a couple of moments, I am going to be putting up on this slide an unfinished sentence, okay? Your task, your only job here today for this exercise is to not finish that sentence. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna ask you to give your brains a little bit of R&R, &R, okay? And just not finish the sentence. Everyone with me? All right, excellent. So if you are ready, here we go. Mary had a little, well, how'd you do? <laughs> By a show of hands, how many people had a word pop into their head anyway? Okay, pretty much everybody. Now, even though we decided not to finish that sentence, right, the word popped into our heads anyway, and all together, what was the word? Lamb, exactly, you guys got it. So, you know, you see that even though we told our minds not to finish the sentence, the word lamb popped into our heads anyway, okay? And this is really a, a great example of how intrusive thoughts work. You know, they can pop into our mind when we are least expecting them to, and they can even happen specifically when we are telling our minds not to think about something. Now, even though we can have unwanted thoughts about all kinds of things, as I mentioned earlier. In this workshop, we are gonna be specifically focusing and, fo and talking primarily about service-related thoughts. And the reason for that is because that is something that all of you have in common, is your military service. And we know that most folks are gonna have thoughts about their military service that pop into their mind from time to time. You know, and as I mentioned earlier, sometimes these are gonna be fond memories, fun times with your buddies. Sometimes these are going to be those intrusive or unwanted thoughts. And it's actually completely normal to have these kinds of thoughts. Most people do have them. And some of you may, may actually be out there thinking, well, you know, actually that doesn't apply to me because I don't really have any unwanted thoughts about my service. And that's okay, because as I said, it's possible to have unwanted thoughts about all kinds of things. That's just the way you know, our minds work. So for example, maybe you have some unwanted thoughts about a mistake that you made at work. Uh, maybe you have some unwanted thoughts about a relationship. You know, so it's important for you to know um, that the kinds of things we're gonna talk about in the workshop apply to all kinds of thoughts not just thoughts about your military experience. So if you were tempted to tune out, okay, because you don't have unwanted thoughts about your military service, I'm gonna really encourage you not to because I think this information is gonna be valuable for you anyway, okay? Now, it's important to know that these thoughts are not only um, a common experience, but that, you know, these thoughts are really just your mind's way of sorting through your experiences, trying to make sense of them does not mean that you are going crazy. Now, let's take a few moments and we're gonna talk a little bit about some examples of some common 
unwanted thoughts. So I've got some examples here up on this slide. We're not gonna spend a whole lot of time actually talking through each of these examples, but I am gonna ask you to take a look at, at both of those columns there and think about whether any of these might apply to you, right? So I have some very common service-related thoughts up here, and I also have some other common kinds of unwanted thoughts up here. So just take a minute and think about, hey, do I have any of these intrusive or unwanted thoughts? Now, sometimes these intrusive or unwanted thoughts can set off all sorts of reactions. And that can be as if you were actually still in whatever that situation might be. And so these thoughts can really get your emotions going. They can get your physical reactions going. And as I kind of go through quickly some of these uh, emotion-based reactions and in the next slide some physical-based reactions, I want you to just be thinking about whether any of these reactions might apply to you, okay? So some common emotion-based reactions might be anger or guilt, sadness, frustration, maybe even feeling hopeless or helpless. And how about some common physical reactions? So maybe when you're having intrusive or unwanted thoughts, your heart starts racing. You feel like it's gonna kind of pound right out of your chest. Maybe you get some feelings of anticipation or anxiety. Maybe you're the kind of person that gets an upset stomach. Or maybe you just get sweaty palms. You know, these are all very common reactions, whether it be the emotional ones or the physical ones. These are all common reactions to unwanted thoughts. Now, we've been talking a lot about how these thoughts are normal, how they're common, everyone has them, um, the kinds of responses we can have to them, but it's, it's important to know what to do if these thoughts start to cause some difficulty in your life. You know, you might notice that you're having a hard time focusing your attention at work. Um, you know, you might also find that maybe you're trying to spend some good quality time with friends and family, and these thoughts are happening so frequently, they, they just start getting in the way. Um, maybe you notice you're having a hard time falling asleep or staying asleep because of these thoughts. Um, or maybe you're using alcohol or drugs to cope with these thoughts. Or you could just be feeling overwhelmed. You know, it's important to think about the fact that um, these thoughts, while they are very upsetting and can be disruptive in your life, there are some things that you can do to really effectively manage these thoughts. So what we've talked about so far are problems, right? Um, We've spent a good amount of time talking about things that, that are challenging or difficult or the way that these thoughts can, can kind of make things hard for you, right? So what about solutions, <laughs> right? Let's talk about some solutions. You know, I'm gonna be teaching you some strategies here today um, that are really the most adaptive and healthy ways for you to manage these unwanted thoughts. And we're gonna call these the reset skills. We're gonna talk a lot about them today. You know, these skills can be applied to just a lot of different areas of your life. But again, because you all have um, the military in common, you know, we're going to be focusing on those kinds of unwanted or intrusive thoughts. You know, a, a lot of the things that I'm going to teach you today might seem new, different, kind of unusual maybe even a little weird, okay? Um, but I'm gonna ask you to keep an open mind because these are the kinds of strategies that research has shown are most effective. And, and honestly, these are actually the kinds of strategies um, <clears throat> that warriors have been using for years to manage their unwanted or intrusive thoughts when they happen. Now, you still might be out there thinking, what good is this training? really you know what's in this for me what am what am i really going to get out of this you know you told me what intrusive thoughts are you know what else do i really need to know you know you taught me how to recognize them how i'm going to react to them uh you know is is there really anything else that i need to learn here you know what does this training have to do with me 
Well, here's the deal. Today, I am gonna be teaching you a way to train your mind. And this is actually a kind of training that, as I mentioned, warriors have been doing for thousands of years, because this is a kind of training that helps to keep your mind aware. Now, I'm gonna ask you, have you ever noticed that you might be doing something, something that you really think is important, something you really wanna focus your time and your attention on, and you find that your mind wanders away from what you're doing. Anybody ever had that happen? Yeah, everybody said, and you see my hand is up too, okay, because it happens to me as well. You know, all of a sudden you're thinking about something you don't wanna be thinking about. Maybe you are thinking about um, a mistake you made at work the other day, some bonehead thing you did. Um, maybe you're thinking about a bad date you had last Saturday night, okay? It could be anything. Um, but this mind wandering happens to everyone. You know, no one has a mind that's perfectly focused 100% of the time. That just is, is impossible. We can't do that, right? The thing is though, every time your mind wanders, you're out of the game, right? Your body is there, but your mind is off somewhere else. And the training that I'm gonna be doing with you today here in this workshop is gonna teach you to be more aware of what's happening in the moment. So you can focus your time and your attention where you want to. And it's kind of like doing mental push-ups. Okay, we are gonna teach you how to train your brain. And it teaches you how to focus your attention even when you're under pressure, which I think we could all agree is a really important skill to have. And these skills aren't just gonna make you a better warrior, um, but they may help you to enjoy life a little bit more, okay? Um, you know, if you're able to really be in the moment, enjoying time with your buddies or with your family or with your friends, you might find that life feels a little bit richer. And, you know, these are the kinds of skills, honestly, that all kinds of folks from professional athletes to warriors um, use when they find that their unwanted thoughts are kind of taking them out of the present moment, taking them away from what they want to be focusing on. Now, I am very clear that you all get taught a lot of acronyms, right? There's an acronym pretty much for everything. And so how could we deliver a workshop to you without giving you another acronym? We can't. Okay, so we have an acronym for you today. This is our RESET acronym. And it's called RESET because it represents all of the skills that I am gonna be teaching you today. And so we're gonna go through and just talk briefly about each letter of the acronym. So the R, remember, it's normal to have intrusive or unwanted thoughts. We're gonna talk about how to ease up on control because it doesn't always work well with thoughts. We'll also talk about how to see and accept your thoughts and that you are more than just your thoughts. We'll also talk about how to experience thoughts as they happen and not to judge them. And then of course, always a very important point, I will teach you how to train your skills because with these skills, practice really is very important, okay? Now, I am gonna ask you to keep the RESET acronym in the back of your mind, um, but not to worry too much about memorizing it because we are gonna be talking through each of these skills and you'll get some materials at the end that uh, you'll be able to refer back to the RESET acronym. Now, before I actually launch into teaching you the reset skills, um, I do want to have you do a little exercise with me today that's gonna demonstrate some of the principles of the human mind that I'm gonna be talking about with you um, today. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is to go ahead and everyone just get comfortable in your chairs, and then I'll ask you to go ahead and close your eyes. Now, if you're not comfortable closing your eyes, I'll ask you to just focus your gaze on a spot on the floor. And I will ask you to keep your eyes closed until I let you know that we're gonna open them back up again. Now, I'm gonna ask you to imagine <clears throat> that you are holding a lemon in one of your hands. First, just hold that lemon out in front of you and take a look at it. Imagine what it looks like 
all yellow and dimpled on the outside of the peel. Imagine what the lemon feels like in your hand. Now squeeze the lemon as hard as you can, letting your fingers really dig into the flesh of the lemon. Imagine the juice of the lemon running all over your hands and notice what the flesh of the lemon looks and feels like. Now bring the lemon up to your nose and smell it. Notice what it smells like and how it feels when that smell hits your nose. Next, imagine taking a bite out of the lemon. Imagine how it tastes and what happens in your mouth as you bite in. Notice any sensations in your mouth. Maybe your face puckering as the sour taste hits your tongue. All right, go ahead, open up your eyes. And by a show of hands, how many folks were actually able to smell the lemon? Okay, got a few hands there. Um, how many folks noticed their, their mouths watering a little bit? Yeah, oh, everybody, okay. You know, we do this um, exercise at the start of this part of the workshop um, because it really helps us to demonstrate an important principle of the human mind. You know, I want you to notice how you interacted with that lemon, okay? It was almost as if the lemon was here in the room with you, right? But of course, here we are, we're looking around. There's no lemons here in the room with us, right? Um, the thought of that lemon alone was so powerful, right, that it made the lemon seem real. And, you know, many of our thoughts are like that. They kind of get us to be able to, to sort of experience them or have responses to them, almost as if they're happening right now, right? But just like the thoughts of those, lemon, those lemons, those thoughts aren't really here either. And what's tricky is that just like those thoughts about the lemon, unwanted thoughts or intrusive thoughts tend to kind of pull us in. It's like we can't even see that we're kind of caught up in those thoughts. And one way we can think about this is like being a fish in water. Now, I have a question for all of you that you may have never been asked before, which is, does a fish know that it's in water? Anybody ever thought about that before? I see, I see some, some nods. I see some people saying, no, I've never thought about that before. Well, you know, a fish doesn't know that it's in water unless it's able to jump up out of the water, look down, and see that water below it. And our thoughts are the same way. You know, we often cannot really see that we are caught up in our thoughts. Now, there is a way that we can notice our thoughts. But in order to be able to do that, we have to be able to kind of take a step back and see the thoughts for what they are. They're not facts, they're just thoughts. And just like the fish in water, you know, we kind of swim around in our thoughts all the time with no idea that we're even in them. And really the purpose of this workshop is to help you to be able to jump up out of the water, to see your thoughts for what they are, rather than just kind of swimming around in them with no idea that they're even there. And in this way, you're going to be able to choose where you want to put your attention. And I'm going to help you to train that attention with the skills that I'm going to teach you today. Now before we move on, I do want to take a moment and I want to talk about how we typically respond to intrusive or unwanted thoughts. So some of you probably have some experience with this. Let's say you come home after a long day. It's time to go to bed. You're tired, right? You get into bed, you are trying to fall asleep, and all of a sudden some unwanted memory pops into your mind. What do you do? Okay, sometimes folks will try to push that thought away or they will really try hard not to think about that thought. We call that suppression. Some folks, they might go do something else. I'm going to get up. I'm going to watch some TV. I'm going to go play a video game. We call that distraction. 
some folks might start having a little conversation with themselves. Gosh, why can't I stop thinking about this? Something's wrong with me. Am I crazy for thinking this? And we call that judgment. And you know, if you're doing any of these things, just know this is how a lot of people respond to thoughts that they don't really want to have. They try to push them away or they try to control them. You know, as human beings, we have a lot of control over areas of our lives. And so we sort of expect that we should be able to control our thoughts as well. But let's take a look at what happens when we try to control our thoughts. Okay? I want you to imagine for a moment a jelly donut. Okay? It is warm, it is sweet, it is fresh out of the oven, flaky, squishy, delicious. Close your eyes for a moment. Now whatever you do, for the next 10 seconds, don't think about that jelly donut. Do not, under any circumstances, allow that jelly donut into your mind. All right, time's up. How many folks were actually able to keep the thought of the jelly donut out of your mind for the full 10 seconds? No one. Wow. Wow. You know, really what that tells us is that trying to suppress our thoughts can work for a really, really short period of time. But the truth is that it is eventually going to fail. Okay. And in fact, there's a lot of evidence that trying to turn thoughts off is going to eventually fail. You know, so blocking out thoughts is really not the best long-term strategy. You know, sometimes it can work for really brief periods, but it will eventually fail. You know, human beings just aren't able to continually suppress thoughts because each time you do that, you're actually making it harder for yourself to use that strategy. All right, how many folks here like research? All right, a few hands. So, so this is a slide that we have for all the folks who really like to see a little bit of research. Okay, you just experienced something that the research told us is true, okay? This slide is a study, and, and what we've got up here is a graph that actually illustrates what happens when people try to push away their unwanted thoughts. Now, as you can see, at the beginning of the study, we had some folks who were experiencing some pretty high levels of intrusive or unwanted thoughts. Okay? Then, they were asked to push away or block or suppress those thoughts. Now, as you can see, right, the number of thoughts they were having went down. Now, it didn't go to zero, but it did go down. What's really more interesting is what happened after they stopped suppressing those thoughts. And as you can see, the thoughts came back. Not only did they go back to where they were, they actually were having more than when they started. And we call this the rebound effect, which again means not only did those thoughts come back, but they were even more frequent than they were initially. And the exercise that you and I did with the jelly donut and also this, the research study that we just talked about demonstrate another basic principle about the human mind, which is that when we have thoughts and feelings that we don't want to have, we often just try to control those experiences. We try to push them away, those thoughts, we try to cut them off, we try to distract ourselves from them. But when we do that, we're actually only making it harder. Every time we try to wrestle with turning those thoughts off, we make them come back stronger and more frequently than we did before. But you know what? We keep trying to turn off those thoughts again and again and again because we're not able to see them for what they are just thoughts, right? I want you to remember that we are like that fish swimming around in the water, not really able to see that if we were able to just jump up out of the water and see those thoughts for what they are, we could see them as separate from us. All right, so let's take a minute and talk about the bottom line. I have poured a whole bunch of information into your brain so far, so let me give you the take home points. So, 
first take home point. These unwanted thoughts are normal. They don't mean you're going crazy, even though it might feel that way sometimes. Second, these thoughts are tricky, okay? They are tricky. They can pull us in. They can get us having all these physical and emotional sensations that we would have just as if those experiences were happening again, even though they're not. And finally, most people try to suppress or control those thoughts. And when they do, this strategy often ends up making those thoughts more frequent, more intense, or more compelling. So you might be saying, okay, great, what do we do? Let's talk about what we do. So luckily, we know that there is a way to manage these unwanted intrusive thoughts that does not create the problem of having these thoughts become more frequent and more intense. And we call this strategy acceptance. Now the basic idea of acceptance is just allowing your thoughts to be, right? Observing them for what they are Instead of giving in to that natural desire that we all have to push them away or to suppress them. You know, we're like that fish looking down into the water, right? We just want to look at our thoughts and we want to see them as just thoughts. And in some ways, to be fair, okay, acceptance is really just like doing almost the exact opposite of what we're naturally inclined to do. Instead of controlling our thoughts, we just kind of let go of that battle, you know? We pick a different battle. We focus on the here and now. You know, I want you to think about it like this. Imagine um, that it's like deciding whether to play tug of war with your thoughts, okay? Um, instead of tugging harder on the rope, you can choose to just not pick up the rope. The thoughts are still gonna be there, okay? But you'll be able to see them for what they are. They're, go they're not gonna take up as much of your mental energy. You're gonna be able to just notice them, but you won't be needing to get sucked into them. And today I am gonna teach you three strategies for accepting your unwanted thoughts. These are what we actually call the reset skills. We talked about that acronym earlier. So they are observing your thoughts, having kindness towards your thoughts. We're not judging your thoughts and also being larger than your thoughts. Now again, I just wanna remind you, as we said earlier, that these kinds of strategies may be very new to you. So I am gonna ask you to keep an open mind as we go into the next part of the workshop. And I'm gonna be teaching you each of these strategies. And the really neat part is we're also going to practice them all in here together today. Now before we actually roll right into those three reset strategies, there is a foundation skill that I, wanted, I want to teach you and I want you to try. And this is the foundation skill of mindful breathing. It's actually something that you can kind of think of as a mental strength exercise. Um, it's like mental pull-ups. Okay, every time you uh, are practicing mindful breathing, um, it's sort of like flexing a mental muscle. Um, now let me ask, has anyone here ever done mindful breathing before and knows what it is, has some experience with it? Okay, I see a couple of hands. So for some of you, this may be a refresher. For the rest of you, this is gonna be a new skill. And I think it's a really neat and valuable skill because this is a skill you can do anywhere, anytime, right? No special equipment required. All you need is your breath and you're always carrying that around with you, right? Um, so let's give it a try. I want to ask everyone to go ahead and either close your eyes or fix your gaze on a spot on the floor. And remember, I'm going to let you know when it's time to open your eyes back up again. Now, first thing I want you to do is just notice your breathing. Don't change it. Don't make it different. Just notice it. Notice each in-breath and each out-breath. Notice what it feels like in your body when you breathe in and breathe out. Notice which parts of your body move as you breathe. 
See if you can notice every aspect of your breathing. See if you can even notice the little urge to breathe in or breathe out that comes right before you actually inhale or exhale. And continue this way for a few moments now, just noticing your breathing. Now, as you do this, also notice when something pulls you away from observing your breathing. Maybe thoughts leap into your mind about something. Maybe a sound distracts you. Each time this happens, just flex that mental muscle to bring yourself back to the breathing. Just shift your attention back to the breath. All right, come on back to the room, open up your eyes. And you're gonna hear me refer to this exercise as I cover each of the three reset skills. And it's a foundation skill, remember, because you're always breathing, right? So you can always go back to your breath at any time, use it as a tool to focus your attention and to stay centered and grounded. So now that you've tried the skill of um, mindful breathing, that foundation skill, let's go ahead and practice the very first acceptance strategy. And this is a strategy that's gonna help you to practice observing your thoughts. And before we start, I think it's important to say that just like strength training, okay, it is gonna take some time to hone this skill. Um, I want you to remember when maybe you first started working out Okay, you probably could only jog a short distance or maybe you could only lift a, a certain amount of weights, right? But with practice and with time, right, your skills improved. And these skills that I'm gonna be teaching you work just like that. They may seem difficult at first, but with practice, your mastery of the skill is gonna improve. All right, so I'm gonna have everyone go ahead again, get comfortable. Once again, close your eyes or fix your gaze on the floor in front of you. And first, just go ahead and start your mindful breathing. Just notice each breath in and each breath out. And come back to your breathing whenever you need to get centered. Now imagine that you are standing at the bank of a peaceful, flowing stream. Now imagine that there are a bunch of leaves gathered by the bank of the stream. You're standing on the bank, watching as the current continuously pulls the leaves one by one into the gentle flow downstream. And as the leaves become part of the flow, Practice observing your thoughts by putting each thought you have in the center of a leaf. Just watch the stream carry the leaves away with your thoughts on them. And as you do this, notice that sometimes the leaves will stop or you will leave the bank or interrupt the flow of the stream, or sometimes the exercise will disappear from your mind completely. If that happens, just notice that the thoughts have pulled you in, or that you're struggling with the thoughts, and return to the bank, letting the leaves flow by again. 
Just keep putting thoughts on leaves. And the main thing to notice is when they stop for any reason and see whether you can catch what happened right before they stopped. And if the leaves aren't flowing at all and you start thinking it's not working or I'm not doing this right, then let that thought appear on a leaf too. And when you're ready, go ahead, open up your eyes, come on back to the room. And by a show of hands, I'm curious, how many of you were able to put any of your thoughts on leaves? Oh, wow. Everybody. That is really, really excellent. You know, the main idea with this exercise is to just observe your thoughts, right? To let them flow without trying to control them or without trying to get rid of them or without trying to struggle with them. And, you know, I, I've... Um, had a lot of folks try this exercise and all of you seem to do very well with it. But you know, I have had folks who struggle and when they struggle, the really important thing to remember is that even just being able to notice your thoughts is progress, even if you actually had some difficulty putting those thoughts on leaves. Now, did anyone notice that during the exercise that maybe you were having thoughts like, Oh, this is silly, or I can't do this. Any thoughts like that going on? Yeah, a couple of folks. Yep, well, if you have thoughts like that, th these are completely normal thoughts to have. And you know, you can just put thoughts like those on a leaf as well. And actually thoughts like those kind of bring us right to our next point, which is, if you were having some thoughts like that, did you also maybe notice that you were having some thoughts about, hmm, maybe this thought's a good thought, or maybe this thought's a bad thought. Yeah, I see some folks nodding, right? Um, you know, if you do that, that's also a pretty normal experience. You know, our minds like to sort of put our experiences into categories and, and you know, we have this tendency to kind of judge whatever we're, we're thinking about or, or whatever experiences we have. And we do this all, all the time with our thoughts and our feelings and our emotions, you know, but, it doesn't really help us to judge our thoughts. You know, they just are what they are. We don't have a lot of control over them. And so spending time and effort judging your thoughts really just wastes what is honestly your most important resource, which is your mental energy. And so observing your thoughts without judging them is another important part of acceptance. And when we practice this, we practice watching our thoughts. You know, just seeing them as they are. Um, mental events, right? Rather than something good or bad or something that we should get rid of or something that we should hold on to. And this helps us to save that mental energy so that we can focus on the things that are most important to us. And this is an exercise that can help you practice that technique of non-judgment with your thoughts. And what it does is it helps you to try to have non-judging reactions to the kinds of thoughts you would normally judge. So once again, I'll ask you to close your eyes or fix your gaze. Now first, go ahead and start your mindful breathing. Just notice each breath in and each breath out and come back to your breathing whenever you need to get centered. Now imagine in your mind's eye, someone you care deeply about. Someone whose image naturally invites a feeling of love and caring. This may be a friend, a family member, a child, a pet, a fellow soldier, or anyone else for whom you feel caring and kindness. 
And when you have this person or animal in mind who is nearest to your heart, see how much you care for them. Notice what it is about them that draws you near. Notice how you hold them in your heart. Now notice that they too have their own struggles in life. Notice that at times they too struggle with difficult thoughts that they too get burdened by images, memories, and judgments. And when that person is in this difficulty, feel how your heart naturally opens, moving toward him or her to extend comfort, to offer kindness in response to the difficulty, to meet it with kindness and comfort. And after you experience your deep caring for this person close to you, turn this kindness and comfort, this compassion, toward yourself. Take a moment and notice your own struggles. Be aware that at times you are visited by difficult thoughts burdensome images and memories. Notice your own struggle in these places and see if you can, as a choice, extend comfort to yourself in the midst of these experiences. Allow your heart to naturally open to them Notice how you can show concern and comfort. How you can meet this difficulty with kindness. Take a few moments and let yourself rest in this open place. This place where you greet yourself with comfort and kindness. And try this for just a few moments, allowing yourself to open up and offer comfort and kindness toward your own struggles or difficult thoughts. And when you're ready, you can go ahead and open up your eyes and I'm curious, by a show of hands, how many folks were able to first experience that feeling of comfort or kindness towards someone else? Yeah, I see a few hands out there. And how many folks were able to generate that same comfort or kindness for their own thoughts? Yeah, a few. I think fewer hands on that one, and that's pretty common. We see that a lot, right? That, you know, many people have a hard time with this exercise. Um, this is a, an exercise that is a difficult one for folks because it is so much easier for us to generate those kinds of comforting, kind thoughts for others than it is to generate those kinds of thoughts for ourselves. And so if that sounds like you, then this would be a really good skill for you to practice at home um, because, you know, to be completely fair, you know, when you spend time and energy beating yourself up, it just takes away from the things that are important to you. Um, and, you know, being mean to yourself just uses up a whole lot of your mental energy. Now that you've had a chance to practice observing your thoughts non-judgmentally, hopefully you have gotten at least a few moments where you've started to notice a little bit of that space between yourself and your thoughts. In a way, you are like that fish jumping up out of the water and just kind of observing that the water's there, right? It's not good, it's not bad, it's just there, 
And this is another tricky part about thought, right? Not only do they kind of hook us in and get us believing um, that something's really happening, but since we can't see that we're caught up in those thoughts, we somehow start to think those thoughts are, are us, right? That somehow those thoughts are ourselves. But I wanna ask you to notice that our internal experiences, right? So our thoughts, our feelings, and our emotions, those things change constantly, right? Notice how many times your thoughts have changed even just since you came into this room, <laughs> okay? Um, and as you notice this, I want you to notice that you, the person I'm asking to notice all of these changes hasn't changed at all. You know, sometimes we forget that there's a person behind our eyes that's separate from our thoughts, that can have thoughts, but isn't just made of our thoughts. You are someone who has thoughts, not someone who is thoughts. And we're gonna do one last exercise today that's gonna demonstrate this point, that we are not our thoughts, our emotions, or our sensations, that in fact we are larger than our thoughts and our feelings. So once again, just go ahead, close your eyes or fix your gaze and breathe in and out. And as we move through this exercise, use your breath as an anchor if you find your mind wandering, just come back to your breath and then back to the exercise. Now picture the most beautiful mountain you know of or can imagine. One whose form speaks personally to you. And as you focus on the image or the feeling of the mountain in your mind's eye, notice its overall shape, the lofty peak, the base rooted in the rock of the earth's crust. Note as well how massive it is, how unmoving. And when you feel ready, see if you can bring the mountain into your own body so that your body sitting here and the mountain of the mind's eye become one. Your head becomes the lofty peak. Your shoulders and arms, the sides of the mountain. Your legs, the solid base rooted to your chair. Experience in your body the sense of uplift. The elevated quality of the mountain deep in your own spine. Invite yourself to become a breathing mountain, unwavering in your stillness, completely what you are, beyond words and thought, a centered, rooted, unmoving presence. Now notice that a mountain endures many changes. Over the course of a day, the sun moves across the sky, but it's all the same to the mountain. The seasons change, just like thoughts will be constantly changing. But underneath it all, the mountain remains the same. Sometimes the mountain is buffeted by intense storms, wind and rain, snow and ice. And sometimes the skies around the mountain are clear but the mountain sits unchanged by the weather around it. It does not struggle against this weather. The mountain cannot change the weather. Just like you can sit and thoughts will come and go. 
the mountain sits and the storms pass, they will come again. And it continues to be the mountain despite the weather. We too experience storms, stormy thoughts and feelings, sometimes of unthinkable intensity. But like the mountain, we don't need to try to change the weather. Stormy thoughts and feelings will come and pass. Skies will clear again. Experience a feeling of strength and calm, a mountain amid the storms, unmoved by the weather of stormy thoughts. As light and weather and fog all change around us, we remain constant like the mountain. Notice what it feels like to connect to the feeling of sameness, stability in the mountain, despite what thoughts or feelings come and go. All right, go ahead, open up your eyes, come on back to the room, and by a show of hands, how many folks were able to capture that feeling of the stability of the mountain? Wow, everybody, awesome. That's wonderful. You know, the point of this exercise really is to practice being larger than our thoughts, right? Noticing that we have thoughts, but the thoughts aren't who we are. You know, we can have all kinds of thoughts and still remain stable and solid despite them. So now you've learned several different strategies for approaching intrusive thoughts. And, you know, what I'd like you to do um, is to actually take a moment for me and just think back to that thought that I asked you to identify for me earlier. And I want you to think about ways that you could practice these exercises with that thought. And so, you know, you could, if you wanted to practice these reset skills with that thought, you could think about using your mindful breathing. You could think about putting the thought on a leaf and watching it flow by. You could practice non-judgment of that thought with the kindness meditation. Or you could practice being larger than that thought with the mountain exercise. And you could choose whichever you would like to do. So I would like for you at the end of this workshop, when you're on your own time, to practice one of those reset skills with that thought that you identified for me earlier. But I want to also talk with you a little bit about how to just practice acceptance in your life, OK? Um, you know, we talked just a little bit about how to practice it with that thought, but, you know, you might be thinking to yourself, why is practice really important, right? You, you kind of just um, taught me how to do these things. I'm just going to plan to use them when I'm having a bad day. When things are going wrong, I'm going to use one of these reset skills. Well, that's great, you know, but honestly, in order to have these skills kind of trained up and ready to go, you do need to spend some time practicing them because with practice is going to come mastery. And the more mastery you have over these skills, the more effective they're going to be for you. So. One way to do this is actually to set aside some time to practice. And ideally, it would be great if you could spend enough time to do two or three of these exercises a day. Now, each of these exercises are about five minutes. So really, what we're talking about is 10 to 15 minutes. That would truly be great. But I also understand that you're very busy, folks. So even if you could only do five minutes a day, that would be enough to see some real benefit. You can also find ways to incorporate these skills into your daily life, right? So, you know, say you're at work 
you notice some unwanted thoughts starting to come in, you know, you could just start bringing in these strategies even while you're doing whatever you're doing. Say, just start observing your thoughts as they come. You can also take a minute to reset, right? Just maybe say to your coworkers, hey, you know, I just need a minute to go reset. Just step aside. It doesn't have to be for very long, just for a few minutes to practice. And then finally, there are some additional things that you can do to manage these thoughts. And even as you're practicing our new strategies, we want you to continue to do these things, or if you're not doing them now, to think about starting. So these are things like talking to your friends about your intrusive thoughts. You know, maybe keeping a journal where you write down your thoughts, or, you know, practicing healthy living, right? Exercising regularly, utilizing spirituality, refraining from drugs, and using alcohol only in moderation. And I just want to highlight three key points about the workshop today. Number one, as we've talked about um, at various points, unwanted thoughts are a normal experience. Second, attempts that we make to control, avoid, or suppress these thoughts don't work. They actually just make the problem worse. And that mindful, non-judging acceptance really is the best strategy for dealing with unwanted thoughts. And I'm gonna go ahead and put our reset acronym back up one more time. And while I'm putting this up, I just wanna go ahead and take a few moments. I wanna thank you all for your time and attention today. It was really a pleasure for me to be able to present this workshop to you. I hope that you were able to get some valuable things from this workshop. And again, thank you so much.